I am an accessibility strategist and I run my own business, but prior to um, 2015, I was a high school teacher and I taught um, environmental science and had lots of fun coaching students and being a part of the community that way. And I was 41 at the time I was hit by a car. I was riding my bike training for a triathlon and I was hit from behind by a car that didn't see me and I was thrown into the ditch. Um, I sustained a T4 level spinal cord injury. Um, when I when I hit the ditch, my um, one of my vertebrae kind of exploded and a bone fragment from my vertebrae went into my spinal cord and damaged enough of the nerves to cause paralysis from the chest down. So I have ever since then been using a manual wheelchair to get around and um, gosh, like, you know, you never expect it to happen to you, whatever the worst case scenario is that you can think of. And, and then it does and your life changes on a dime and you decide to move forward and, and figure it out. And so that's kind of, that's the short version of my story and, and figuring it out has been very challenging. So here's a, an example of a basic thing that you would never think twice about in the old house, getting the milk out of the fridge, right? So um, old farmhouses, you know, you, you toss a bunch of ping pong balls and they all eventually roll to one central spot because all the floors slope right to that. And so that's where the fridge was right there. So um, to open the fridge door and then and let go of my wheels to reach in and grab the milk. I would actually roll away from the fridge. So you open the door and you have to go past the swing of the door, right? And then you reach in. And as I'm reaching in, I'm actually rolling away from the milk. So I'd have to open the door, put my brakes on, get the milk, put it on a counter, take my brakes off and then go and, you know, put the milk in my coffee or whatever. So it's all of those little tiny things add up during the day to the point where you're like, ah, screw it, I don't have energy to that. go yeah, outside or work or right. play with my kids or whatever. We spent way too long figuring out how to build an accessible home. There really was not a lot of information out there that was useful, um, up to date and helpful for somebody who's trying to figure out how to design a space to be um, functional, safe, uh, ability to be independent, preserve dignity, all of the things that go with accessibility. And um, in the end, what I have learned is that accessibility isn't just about being able to get into a space, it's about being able to function and save energy like like personal physical energy right and in doing that then you don't have to expend energy doing all the things that you have to do in life but you get to save energy and do the things that you want to do learning what to do to make this space right took a long time and, and we went through i think like 40 different 42 different versions of our house plan before we landed on the one that we thought that was going to work best. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and in the end, when we moved in, I couldn't believe the difference that it made for my headspace, my, my, my ability to like cook and spend time with my kids where energy is the umbrella and things like independence, dignity, and safety are the things that are holding up that umbrella. And the more you have holding up that umbrella, the, the better you are um, able to protect yourself from life. So no steps, no basement. Right. Um, and, and you know, well, if you don't have a basement, where's all your stuff? Well, we have to be creative with your storage, right? And um, the all of the basement stuff is 
in a mechanical room on the main floor. So if something is beeping or something shuts off or whatever, I can go into that mechanical room and, you know, at least do a diagnosis of what might have gone wrong. If, if there's a circuit that's tripped, I can actually reach the circuit breaker because we turned it sideways and, and uh, I, can, I can have access to it. I couldn't in the old house because it was in the basement. Yeah. Um, so it's sometimes it's the things that you don't think about in terms of um, the function of a home that also feed into that idea of independence. It's changing one person at a time. That's what I'm focusing on is changing, um, changing the minds and and leaving that information there so that it trickles down. So this, this architecture firm that I'm working with in Toronto, the, the, the main person that I've been talking to is so excited about having me work with his staff. And my idea is to like work myself out of a job. I just love that, that, um, that I've been able to open eyes, right? To see so that people can see from a different perspective that it's not just about turning circle on a floor in a drawing or um, you know, the width of a doorway. There's so much more to it. Mm -hmm.